It's good, huh? Unbelievable. I'll leave you to it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the times George Sr. defied everything we thought we knew about him based on Sheldon's anecdotes in The Big Bang Theory. If you haven't watched the original series or you're behind on its prequel, this is your spoiler warning. Your first order is to return to your seat. Aye, Captain. Number 10. Sheldon Shows Appreciation Based on what Sheldon shared about his dad in the Big Bang Theory, it seemed like they rarely clicked, and George Sr. didn't seem to care much about what mattered to him. My father loved football. He always made me watch it before I was allowed to do my homework. However, this episode paints a different picture. Dr. Sturgis joins the family for dinner, and the conversation shifts to potential black hole outcomes engaging the whole family in entertaining, devastating, and hilarious alternate realities. Towards the end of the episode, adult Sheldon reflects on what he wished he'd said to his dad. There's a lot of things I wish I had said to my dad while he was around. That I appreciated him. That I loved him. Which is why I'm grateful for the times I did tell him how I felt. In his own way, young Sheldon lets his dad know that the evening meant a lot to him. George's response and the smile they share leave us with a warm feeling. Dr. Sturgis was here. Everybody talked about science. It was nice. It was. Number 9. Looking Out for Georgie The relationship between George and Georgie hasn't always been the best. However, it's clear that George Sr. genuinely wants what's best for his son and hopes to see him fulfill his potential, even if his methods can be tough at times. You know, I'm not loving your attitude lately. I think it's great you got this job and you're doing so well at it. I'm proud of it. Going back to the pilot, Georgie voices his annoyance at starting high school alongside his nine-year-old brother. Georgie, freshman year, that's a big deal. How can I be excited when he's gonna be in the same grade as me? Don't worry, Georgie, I'm not planning on being in the ninth grade for very long. While Mary coddles Sheldon before his first day, George takes some unconventional steps to ease Georgie's embarrassment. From Sheldon's perspective, we can see how this might align with the George he often gripes about in adulthood. The boy is nine years old and going into high school. Isn't that weird enough? Give it to me. Come on, it's not just Sheldon. Georgie's gonna be in class with him. However, we see it as a dad making sure one child's needs don't overshadow the others. Number 8. Helping Missy When Aunt Flo First Calls Even though this is something about 1.8 billion people experience monthly, many are conditioned to feel embarrassed about it. Should we go home? I'm pitching in an hour. I you think that's a good idea? Maybe you need to lie down. I don't need to lie down. Okay, well maybe I need to lie down. And if you've been in Missy's shoes, who's perhaps the last person you wanted with you in that moment? George's initial panic is kind of hilarious and hardly surprising, given the society he was likely raised in. Nothing to be embarrassed about. It's perfectly natural. Perfectly normal. Dad, I know. I'm telling myself. Still, he steps up in Missy's time of need and tries his absolute best. Luckily, the cashier realizes he's out of his depth and takes over. Still, you have to appreciate his efforts. Some other dads would have crumbled under their own discomfort. We also love how George's love for his daughter only grows after this experience. There you go! <laughs> That's how you do it! Is that your little girl? That's my little lady. Number 7. Teaching His Kids Valuable Life Lessons Throughout The Big Bang Theory, both Sheldon and his mother have made some jabs at George Sr.'s intelligence, but he's no slouch when it comes to dishing out wisdom. Sounds like a wise man. Oh, not so wise. He once tried to fight a bobcat for some licorice. He's always pushing Georgie to level up and be more responsible. He's also taught Sheldon the importance of honoring commitments, even when things don't go as planned. Then there's the time he took on the Herculean challenge of attempting to teach Sheldon the fine art of not blurting out every thought. Dad. Instead of losing patience, act interested and then ask a follow-up question. Your father's a mechanic. Interesting. 
You know what else is interesting? Quantum mechanics. Spoiler, Sheldon's filter is a work in progress, but props to George Sr. for trying. Also, applause is deserved for his valiant attempts at convincing Sheldon that winning isn't everything. Trust us, that's a battle even superheroes would find daunting. Believe me, I was furious. But I sucked it up, and I walked across that field, and I shook their hands. I didn't hear a word you said. Number six, cheering Sheldon up when their trip gets rained out. Hey, Sheldon Lee Cooper, we have a bone to pick with you. In the Big Bang Theory episode, The Explosion Implosion, Sheldon claims his dad never built model rockets with him. I always wanted my dad to build rockets with me, but he wasn't interested. What he conveniently forgets to mention is how his father drove him to the Space Center when NASA didn't reply to his calculations for VTVL technology. We're going to Houston. Really? Yeah. You and me are gonna give those space monkeys a little talking to. How about the time George took his sons on a boys weekend to witness a space shuttle launch? Sure, rain pours on their parade, but sensing Sheldon's disappointment, George knows exactly how to shift the mood. Would you explain it to me? <laughs> when positive and negative charges grow large enough, a giant spark occurs in the cloud. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. What causes the thunder? This doesn't sound like the disinterested dad Sheldon describes. We're glad Sheldon eventually realizes how much his father cared. I didn't realize until years later that my father was only asking questions about lightning and thunder to cheer me up. In fact, he would often pretend to be dumb just to make me feel better. Number five, supporting his wife in difficult moments. Adult Sheldon's recollection of his parents' marriage isn't exactly a fairy tale, and to a large extent, that seems accurate. You're honestly happy with how your life turned out. You have no regrets. That giant mistake gave us our children, who I love very much. What about your husband? Oh, I love him just fine. Oh, nice. Put that on a Hallmark card. The Coopers tied the knot more due to societal pressures than personal desire, but it doesn't mean there's no love there. For instance, George encourages Mary when she's offered a job at the church. And take the job. Yeah, if it turns out Sheldon and Missy can't look out for themselves for a couple of hours after school, then well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Are you sure about this? Yeah. He also steps up to support his growing family when Mary learns she's pregnant and later comforts her when she miscarries. He also defends his family when the community and church turn their backs after learning about Georgie's impending arrival. Y'all talk a big game about community and then you know, just turn your back when things get a little messy. Okay, let's just take a breath. You do that. We're leaving. Come on, Mary. George, let's talk this through. I've heard enough. I'll be in the truck. We're not handing him a halo or anything, but Sheldon and Mary could have tossed George a bit of long overdue credit now and then. Number four, bonding with Missy over baseball. In season three, Missy throws George a curveball with her sudden interest in baseball. In a sweet father-daughter bonding moment, he teaches her how to play catch, but he quickly catches on that there's more to Missy's interest than meets the eye. And what's something I could say about the Rangers? You know, to sound cool? Just about a boy. No. All right, sorry. However, when she strikes out with her crush, George steps up to the plate again, asking Missy what he can do to make her feel better. What can I do? Nice. In Big Bang, Sheldon notes that Missy once bought George a world's greatest dad mug. These moments showcase that he's worthy of that title. Not only does he teach Missy to throw a curveball, but he proudly becomes her number one fan when she decides to pursue her passion. Ejected from your very first game. I'm proud of you, slugger. Thanks, Dad. Number three, daddy-daughter dates. Missy may sometimes feel overlooked in her family, making her moments with her dad extra special. What sounds... Fun. I'd like to be taken to dinner. Great. Where? To the fanciest restaurant in all of Texas. Their first daddy-daughter date in season one takes them to the fanciest restaurant in Texas, Red Lobster. Their dynamic is incredibly cute, especially when she asks George to sit with her after he shows her how to de-shell her lobster. Sit with me. Okay. 
When I grow up, I'm gonna eat lobster every night. As Missy enters adolescence, she goes through that shift that almost all teens do. Suddenly, being seen out with a parent isn't so cool, not even at Red Lobster. Despite this, George still finds a way to make her smile. Okay. Well, what would you like me to call our daddy daughter dates? You're so annoying. Mm -hmm. Although we imagine he would soon regret letting her get behind the wheel. Number two, he's made personal sacrifices for his family. It's no secret that George Sr. isn't thrilled with his life. His job often leaves him feeling unfulfilled and frustrated. But hey, he's got a family to provide for. I believe they're willing to uh, exceed your current salary by a substantial amount. Is that so? Yes. They thought it would incentivize you. Without John, they're not wrong. Often underappreciated, he quietly prioritizes his loved ones, even at a personal cost. At one point, he turns down a coaching position at a prestigious school in Oklahoma to avoid uprooting his family and disturbing their stability. I turned it down. Why? Because you're afraid of mom? Because I don't want to live in Oklahoma. George. What difference does it make, Mayor? We're not moving. Though his sacrifices aren't always acknowledged, they underline his commitment to his loved ones. We're not excusing all his behaviors, but this adds some much needed depth to his character. This context paints a far more nuanced individual than the one Sheldon describes in The Big Bang Theory. Did I want to get stuck coaching high school football? Did I want to live across the street from your mother? Did I want to spend my evening getting yelled at by my daughter and my son and my wife? I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were so unhappy because you never bothered to ask. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Worrying about Missy. We doubt the George Sr. Sheldon described in The Big Bang Theory would have stayed up worrying. Not saying I love her the most, but if anything happened to Missy. She is your little girl. Not so little anymore. Hmm. And I hate it. George and Georgie's heart to heart. Father and son share various bonding chats, but this one pretty much sums up parenthood. Yeah, you got it rougher than me. Does it ever stop being scary? I got a call from the Mexican border and my son was in jail. What do you think? Fair point. He knows how to calm Sheldon. Sheldon never told us how good his dad was at getting through to him. That's a rough day. <laughs> that was all before 10 a.m. So I get what you're going through. But you'll notice, I didn't come home and take it out on you. No, you didn't. Seeing Missy through the storm, we don't just mean shielding her during a tornado. I really do love you and Mom, and I don't actually hate children. I'll be better, I promise. I know you will. I love you too. Bringing Sheldon home, he drives to Dallas in the middle of the night when he sees how much his family misses Sheldon. I'll see you in a bit. Where are you off to? I'm going to Dallas to get Sheldon. Really? Yeah, really. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Helping Sheldon Overcome His Flying Fears Okay, some of George's poorer decisions might have skewed Sheldon's opinion of him, but he conveniently seems to forget those times his dad was there for him. When Sheldon runs for class president and is daunted by the prospect of public speaking, who provides the pep talk that fuels his courage? Sheldon, you are 10 years old going to high school. Everyone's older than you, everyone's bigger than you, but you keep at it, day after day. That's brave. Sheldon often paints his dad as a football and beer fanatic who couldn't care less about his interests. But he sure knows enough about Star Trek to calm Sheldon's nerves about flying. I'm not Mr. Spock. No, but, but I've seen you pretend to be him. Could you do that right now? You be Spock, I'll be Kirk. It shows how much George does care for his son and understands him more than he's given credit for. You okay, Mr. Spock? Doing my best, sir. Mr. Spock don't hold hands. Sorry? He also helps Sheldon realize that it's not totally illogical for Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk to hold hands. What surprised you the most about George Sr. and young Sheldon after everything Sheldon told us about him in The Big Bang Theory? Let us know in the comments. I wish your dad could see you now. Me too. I miss him.
He would be so proud of you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.